Nvidia, thanks for the support. All right, red green dinos. Let's get a little bit, little stompy, shall we? Our boy rampaging for us We just got done playing Esper and talking about how there's a rough time against Field of the Dead decks. Our boy rampaging for Ostadon is here and he's ready to put the Field of the Dead decks in their place. Just got a bunch of reasonable, stompy, smashy dinos. And, uh, you know, let's do it. How does price gouging metaphorically connect with a free $20 bill? Um, how do I, how do I phrase this? What's the, what's the best, but yeah, price, price gouging in something that's one, already a luxury hobby and two, a subsection of this already optional hobby that is then optional still within the hobby itself. So like, my my point is people are gonna complain regardless of what Wizards does, so they should probably just do whatever makes the most sense for them. It's a lot like producing content in a way. People, people are gonna complain regardless of what type of content I make, so I might as well just make the content that I enjoy. Why'd we, why'd we time out Branch, Ian? I, I had people tell me that too, Cummy Pizza. <laughs> Sub only content would kill my channel. That's literally something people have told me. What did, what did Branch say? I missed it. I can look it up. Are you upset about using the word, using the word bitch? Like, is that, is that what we're upset about? So I don't, I don't really have a problem with that being vernacular used here. Uh, I think I'm just attacking with this. Do I want to attack with the three as well? How defensive do I think I need to be is essentially the question. I think I'm going to be a little bit conservative here. That's pretty good. I think we just do that and smash, right? Let them sort it out. Math is for blockers, sort it, sort it out. I guess this lets them kill my Registor, maybe. I keep the other ones though, so that seems fine. Next turn I can go Frostodon into Marauding Raptor. That's a pretty good one, also good. Just to reiterate for one last time, my thoughts on the historic card pricing. To be upfront and clear where I stand at the core of it is would I, would I like it if it was cheaper? Would I like it if Magic Arena was free? Heck yeah, I'd like it if Magic Arena was free and it was cheaper. Do, do I think 
Do I think magic, do I think historic costing more is going to kill the format or make it DOA? I do not. I think the people saying that are flat out ignoring everything that we have from magic's history. Modern, modern is far more expensive than paper standard and it is far more popular. This isn't Trump's Twitter. You don't just get to make shit up like it's DOA and then point it like it's fact. Especially when there is piles of evidence to the contrary of what you're trying to pass off as fact. That's not, that's not how this works. This isn't, this isn't the magic subreddit we're going to stroke you off in your circle jerk because I want to validate what you think is, what you think is true. Thanks for the 15 months, America. Welcome back. Menace, Menace is busted, so they can't play a creature now. Modern, paper modern. Paper modern costs two and a half to three times as much as playing, as playing paper standard. Paper, paper standard. Paper Modern is way more popular than Paper Standard. Yeah, I think a big part of the people complaining are people who never put money into Magic Arena anyways or put little, very little money into it. And and I, I'm sorry if this hurts your feelings to tell you that. The people who are complaining that spend very little money on the product, Wizards doesn't care about you, most likely. That's, that's the, at the, at the end of the day, the people who are spending money on the game have, aren't going to have an issue with how the historic is priced. Would it would it be great if it was the same cost or less or free? Yeah, it would be great. But to say that it's going to be DOA flies in the face and is contrary to everything we have in terms of historical information from from formats like this existing. I don't know if I even want a sideboard here. Like maybe I want Veil of Summer, but I don't even know what I really want to cut. I kind of like all the cards I have in my deck right now. I think I'm just going to click Submit. Like I've already got some removal in the main. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what Pelly said exactly correct. The purpose of free to play players is to shorten queue time so the people who spend money have to wait less. That's, that's the purpose of free to play players in every digital game. I know. <laughs> um, huh. Ceratops or Galta? I'm going to take the Ceratops because I think they're going to have a lot of removal post board. And basically made a reasonable middle ground that it was fair from a company end user perspective. The responses were just that it should cost less than standard. And it would be amazing. Otherwise, I don't, I don't. I don't think I follow exactly what you're saying, Conqueror. I'm definitely guilty of being a whale, so I already have most relevant cards that are ready to rotate. Thanks to the seven months, Butler. <clears throat> it's not and goulash. It's not even that's what I think you said. There is even off base a little bit. Wizards isn't even telling free-to-play players they have to spend more or do something different. What Wizards is telling people is they're saying, if you want to specifically play historic, you have to invest more or spend more. That, that's what they're telling them. If, if free-to-play players want to keep playing standard in the way they're playing now, none of that is changing for them. It's all exactly the same as it was before. And, and maybe it's just the fact that, like, I've been around magic for as long as I have. But magic, the thing that makes magic great, and the reason why magic has lasted for as long as it's lasted, is not every format of magic is for every person. Like, 
And some sometimes the reason why a format's not for you is because you don't enjoy it. And sometimes the reason that format's not for you is because buying a vintage deck costs more than buying my car. Like, that's that's just the reality of it. And like people pretending that like Wizards doesn't have a pile of data showing them that this decision makes sense because it really does make sense from a business perspective are, are kidding themselves. And that's that's the part that really bothers me. It's not the fact that people want things to be cheaper. Like we all, I would love if things were cheaper. It's the fact that people are making bad arguments based on their feelings instead of their the actual facts and the historical perspective. Yeah, people, people, that, that I agree with that, true, true. People, people treat a luxury hobby, and not even that, but they treat a specific part of this luxury hobby like they deserve access to every part of it like it's clean water. I, I don't even make an effort to free to play on arena. I just do my daily quests and sometimes play in the constructed events. And I have almost a hundred thousand gold saved up before the next set release. Like, like that, that's a lot of in-game currency. Con considering you only need 200 to 250 packs for a complete set. I'm going to have half a complete set just from playing without putting any dollars in. Sure, but they're not they're not gonna do that, Rakdos, because they make more money not having it treated like a living card game. Sure, but the the line for what you get past your quest in terms of gold conqueror is not that high. The amount of ex extra gold you get is not I don't play arena is less than half arena is has been half my day or less for most of this. And there's a cutoff to how much gold you can get per day. And even even if you have, okay, you wanna you wanna use my you wanna use bad data and say I make too much because I play a lot. Sure, take take what I have and cut it in half. Fifty thousand fifty thousand gold is still a almost a quarter of a new set without spending anything. I have almost 50k and I'm a casual player. Yeah, I don't I think I would be surprised if that's not the norm. And for for the people that are saying they're casual, the, for the casual players in the audience who want to who want to make a little bit more, I bet if you spent your time playing constructed events instead of playing on the ladder, if you're winning half your matches, you'd probably make more. My my gold intake actually went up significantly when I started playing in the the constructed events, because if you three to the constructed events, you you make a profit. All right, I think I just do Huntmaster into this because I can play this with haste next turn then. I agree. I think... Just, just again to make my positions clear on these games in general, I think most free-to-play games, including Arena, have their structure through which they acquire... Oh, through which you acquire cards is fairly predatory in general. That being said, as someone who spent piles of money and time on both Hearthstone, Arena, and a variety of other games, I think Arena is actually towards the top of what you end up getting overall for what you're putting in. Mr. Salmonella, thanks for the $3 tip. <laughs> Hey, congrats on the top 1,000 with Yarok Field. 
I'm glad, glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, I did. Eternal is not one I've spent time on because Eternal card game is one the gameplay just never really did it for me. Just could not get into it. Thanks, McNugget. Hey, EZ. Speaking of thanks, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. There's a lot of great people you can uh, subscribe to here on Twitch. Thanks for thanks for supporting my content this month. Taking advantage of that half off September. I think I want to kill Chandra here. So this was the best draw in our deck. Hands down, not close. Oh, I guess killing Chandra lets them flip this and bring Chandra back. Yeah, maybe I am just supposed to... Well, I guess they could have down-ticked Chandra. All right, so we want to draw another one of these. Whoa, that Bedevil animation. I missed that last time. Oh, that's true. Ceratops killed them. That's very true. Ceratops was lethal. So they'll pick up Chandra, Chandra will kill this, and then we have uh, Regisaurs and Ceratops that are lethal off the top, and we have Commune with Dinos that are redraws for them. Oh, that's a good, that's a good play for my opponent. Uh, this is still lethal though, right? Because I can also give it Trample. Close game. Except for them wanting to add random powerful cards. So I I completely disagree with your sentiment there. And here's here's why I disagree with it. Playing with sweet magic cards is great, and power creep from powerful cards getting into the format is going to happen as more magic sets are printed regardless. So what you're worried about is gonna happen regardless, only what you're worried about is going to happen. It's gonna, I don't know why people are okay with it happening organically, but not having it, not having it be forced in. As a, as a great comparison for people who don't follow modern, modern recently, modern recently released a modern horizon set and it was an entire set direct to modern. And the number of modern playable cards from that entire set was somewhere between 10, 20 and 30 cards in it. So directly releasing 15 to 20 playable cards is very similar to them designing a whole set. They're just skipping over, putting a bunch of unplayable draft leavings in it. Hey, Boneless, thanks for the year and a half. Yeah, I, I agree, Easy. You're definitely seeing a cultural shift, right? I also, I also think one of the things that's really bad about the arguments that you see on Reddit that I feel makes them a little bit disingenuous is a lot of people draw comparisons between the price of Historic and the pricing of Wild and Hearthstone. And my comment to you is, how much support does, does Wild have in Hearthstone? From my understanding, Histo Wild and Hearthstone basically has zero support. People don't play it. Very few people play it, sorry. Whereas the difference with Magic is Wizards of the Coast has shown us that they can and are willing to support their non-rotating formats. I think it's not an accident or a mistake that they changed how much they planned to charge for Historic when they announced that they were going to support it more. I don't, I don't think that's a coincidence. I put the devil in him. The devil there is, the devil there is actually, well, yikes, rude. I was say it means they probably don't have a sweeper. I meant they didn't have ritual assist. The events give a full playset, even if it takes ten hours to grind. Extra. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I really have a strong opinion on that either way. A 
lose our fifth land here is sad, but let's just draw another one here like a professional. All right, I'll do pig. My very scary dino a pax test attacks past nickel bolas because this thing is menacing. I do hope, even if they don't have a cue for it, I hope there's an option for Historic Commander. I do think it would be a pretty big miss on their part if they don't have a direct challenge mode for that. Gosh, the little animations they added to all these cards are so great. Yeah, I, I agree, easy. There aren't there aren't good direct comparisons. Yeah, some kind of monthly event could be good. Do I throw this away? Nah, I just do this. They're empty-handed. They're not going to block here, I don't think. Really? Okay. Yeah, sure. Of course they're going to give confirmation that they've heard the feedback. Uh, brawl, normal, normal standard brawl is supposed to be in the game full-time, easy. That's something that they've mentioned. <laughs> right, Spider? The wild, the wilds are my shield. All right, you go kill the dragon god. You go to the face. I mean, I don't even know if it's fair to say that I support it so much as I understand it. Like, again, as someone who wants to do a lot of historic, like, I, I'll bet historic's gonna be wildly popular even with the two to one. It would be more popular at the cost of standard, at the cost of standard success if it didn't have the two to one. But I think regardless, it's gonna be popular. I'm also hoping it's going to be popular because I would like to play it on stream. So I'm definitely biased a bit in that optimism. But based on how modern's popularity has existed in paper, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect Historic to be similar. Look at that. The, ra the Raptor Raptor curve is just so good. So, I actually think Brainstorm would be a sweet addition to Historic. And anybody who thinks Brainstorm would be too strong in Historic should go play some Pauper with Brainstorm. Because Brainstorm blows when you don't have fetch lands. It's really bad. Man, I really hope they don't reprint fetches. Reprinting reprinting fetches would be silly in my opinion. Pfft. 
print Price of Progress into Historic. Get out of here. Get out. Have a damage. You can draw some cards, but have a damage. I also found it very funny that people were surprised that there was gonna be a premium for Historic. It's like, yes, you are surprised that the same company that let Scalding Tarn cost $100 is charging a premium for the new non-rotating format. Gasp, gasp. I, I for one, am shocked. I think, comp oh, buddy old pal. Oh, buddy old pal. Unfortunately, he doesn't have haste, but he'll be good in the future. Hey, Teferi, thank you for the very generous tier two sub. Really appreciate that. My tier two subs support me a little bit extra. So if you want to take a peek at the deck queue and let me know if there's a deck in there you'd like to bump up and see a little bit sooner, tier two subs get to add 10 points to a deck every month when they renew. You are also welcome to save your bump until later this month when we start getting decks for the new format in there. Speaking speaking in general to veer off of the historic ramblings, um, if you see a sweet card in the new set that you would like a deck built around to be played on stream at some point in the future, build around submissions are open now for any cards that are spoiled. I will start taking specific deck submissions when um, when the full set is spoiled later this month. I like that idea, Punchworthy. Or maybe, maybe what if, I kind of think that would be an okay compromise. What if, what if when you bought older packs, they filled up your ticker towards wild cards twice as fast? And if you buy a historic booster pack and you it fills your ticker two points instead of one for opening a booster towards your next wild card. So you get them, you get them twice as quick. That's, that's like a middle ground solution I could see them doing because people have to pay them money for packs. That that doesn't seem unreasonable because it, it encourages people to buy packs that are rotated out. Swolo Baggin, thanks for the three months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Sure, people people would still complain, but it would be something. Anything, anything short of it's exactly, anything short of it's exactly the same price as standard people will complain about. We might not get another turn, chat. Complimentary timeouts are always available around these parts. Nah, just the same as always, Marty. Do they have a turn on the stack? I feel like they have a turn on the stack. There's an icon over here, so I think the next turn is theirs. Yeah, they're, they're playing blue-green Nexus. This is a deck that, an archetype that did well in the MCQ weekend. I'm just, I'm just like hanging out and waiting because like, they can only put two more creatures into play before the Frostodon kills them, so they need to, like, bounce my stuff or something. Well, this, this denies life gain, chat. Yeah, unless, until they show us, like, Flood of Tears or, um, like, Snare, whatever that Snare card's called. 
Okay, angry, angry dino's like, hold on, bro. Calm down. Oh, they have, they have blast zone. So they can get set up where they, they set up blast zone in Nexus just to kill the frosted on, right? That's their, that's their plan. Neil Drox, thanks for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. They missed on Tamio. Do you already have a Nexus in your hand? They could have another Tamio in their hand. They can quasi duplicate Risen Reef to draw five. Okay, we have to they have to break out five more cards here. There's only 19 cards in their deck, so pretty, pretty likely that they get there. Close game though. If they if they take a turn here, I'm gonna concede. Good game's opponent. There's, there's only 14 cards in their deck chat. They're going to get there. I got, I got bad news. They're going to get there. Yeah, I'm just going to trip some of my removal and board in Cinder Vines. Yeah, I'll split the difference. Let's just try and run them down. Can it to win it? Thanks for the eight months. I appreciate that. Welcome. They still had three draws on the stack, Tom together. So they had they had four Nexus. I can I can count it out. So they had four Nexus in 14 cards. And their sample size was two draws, a draw step, and a Tameo, so seven. So they were 97% to hit there. Maybe, maybe I take, maybe I take one turn to like see if they miss their three percenter, but. We're pretty likely to be dead. Undead Voodoo. It looks like you are currently subscribed to the channel. Thanks for keeping me around. Uh, I'm actually going to grab Registrar Alpha here. Because I already have like 3-4, right? I was hoping to find a 2-drop there. Our hand's a little bit slow. Maybe I should have just been less greedy and taken the land. It's possible not taking the land was greedy. Levity, thank you very much for the 12 months of support. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, that's just like bigger than all my stuff. Sweet, that was the freebie anyways, because we were at the rink floor. Easy, easy. See, that's that's how you know I'm a professional, chat. I put I put the loss in the right place. Always, always put the L's where they matter least. Now we win the next three, and then we can lose the fourth. I would promise for us that I would stop these types of decks. I mean, it makes them slightly worse. It does not stop them. These decks are very, very good, Burgle. Like, to, a, to an absurd degree. That was the perfect hit there. It's exactly what we wanted for Christmas. Look at him. He's being a little, being a little hangry over here, a little peckish. Oh no, oh no, not a growth spiral deck, chat. Ugh. So there will be a best of one historic queue that we won't be playing on streams. I'm not a big fan of best of one personally. Um, released when rotation happens it, at the end of the month. There will be a best of three and a test. There will be a best of three Q slash testing ranked Q added in at the end of November, beginning of December, I believe. There is there is an announcement on Wizards site that has the details. 
So I believe they said the pricing change for historic for wild cards doesn't happen until the November update. But again, all those those timelines are detailed in this article here. So I wouldn't I wouldn't go off of my memory or anyone else's. I would I would check the actual details. Now, one thing I'm not sure of if, and I'm hoping maybe they do this, if they give us, a, not a queue, but if they give us historic best of three direct challenge option, I think we might do maybe one day a week where we do some sub battles for that day with direct challenges so we could play historic before there's a best of three queue. So hopefully, hopefully that stuff. Yeah, we have we have them dead on board, right? So that's nice. That that being said, we're probably not gonna get another combat step for a while, but not a meaningful combat step, anyways. It's the Nexus of Fate. It takes the turns while we wait and hate Nexus of Fate. I played my 12 power dino. Yeah! Magic is fun and interesting. Wizards of the Coast, if you're out there, do the right thing. Ban this card in Historic from the start. Do what you know in your heart of hearts is correct. Don't leave this card legal. I would also accept a Tefri ban, but Nexus, Nexus is my, my number one, please leave. Thoughts on something like this, best of one, but before the game, you reveal your commander and have a limited amount of time to add and subtract cards from a sideboard. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I think it's kind of complicated and convoluted though and wouldn't go over well for a lot of players. So I think from a, is this neat and interesting standpoint? Yes. I think from a, is this very practical standpoint? The answer is no. That's actually an interesting question. If historic is best of one to start, is, is Nexus banned in it? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if that standard ban carries over. Restricted cards suck and should not be should not happen. As someone who's played vintage, restricting cards just makes the game higher variance. So the reason why I haven't conceded here yet is because my opponent does not have a sustained source of card advantage. The Chemist's Insight gets them pretty close. That probably means we're dead. Counterpoint, Commander MTG's most overwhelmingly popular format has 100% of cards restricted. That's fair. That is, that's a good, I just can't argue with the clean data there. We're probably dead, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be done. So, my my tinfoil hat theory is the reason why they never banned Nexus of Fate this standard season was in large part due to them wanting to promote magic streaming. And the reason I say that is because watching your opponent win with Nexus of Fate is a lot like watching a magic stream on Twitch only in the client. You're just watching someone else play magic. That's very, it's very, very similar. I think I'm gonna bring in Fry to kill. 
to kill uh, Narset before it can down tick again. Definitely want Cinder Vines and Vivian. Maybe some Galtas are better than the Fry. Maybe just go like 2 2 here. I, don't know, I feel like by the time this comes down, they're probably already need in fog or die mode. Could go either way. I don't have enough experience with the matchup to really know. Well, that that the big issue with Nexus of Fate, Lazy Man, is that even when you know what you're doing, it's still mechanically, general, it generally takes you a while to do it mechanically, even when you know what's up. Cinder Vines plus a Smashy Dino, sign me up. Let's attack you for five on turn three. Beep, beep. Fry misses Tamio when she upticks. If Fry killed Tamio when she upticked, I would bring all four of them in for sure, but Tamio ticks up to six. To get to get all anecdotal evidence on you, a lot of people that I've talked to have said that they're their LGSs have gone back to standard being dramatically less popular than modern at their weekly tournaments over over the summer in the last few months. Which which is weird to me because modern costs two to three times as much as standard, and everybody knows that if a format costs twice as much, it's DOA. I read that on Reddit, so I know it's true. Wow, that's rude. He's he's supposed to be uncounterable, chat. They weren't supposed to be able to touch my boy. He was supposed to power through. No, nah, I don't think that's strictly true, J. Ray. I think comments like that vastly underestimate how many new players Arena's brought into Magic. In fact, when Standard and Draft are really good, Arena on average increases. Uh, Watsi had posted numbers that all of their all of their paper metrics were up alongside Arena doing well. The, the scaremongering of, like, digital magic killing off paper magic is very silly. One hasty boy. 20 why Watson won't give us a friends list. Trust me when I say the reason why you don't have a friends list in Arena is because they don't have the bandwidth to get it in yet. It's almost, almost assuredly the reason. Dr. Victory MTGA, thanks for the brand new Prime Sport. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for shipping your Bezo bucks this way this month and keeping me employed. I think there is a giant laundry list of things the team surrounding Magic Arena would like to get done. We just haven't had time to get to it yet. I mean, their rigorous set release cycle is definitely part of that, right? And... 
the ideal situation is hopefully they get, they get to hire more people to roll things out. Hopefully, hopefully that's what happens. Oh, we're gonna either gust my thing and then untap and kill me. That's exciting. We're pretty unlikely to die from here. Fingers crossed, knock on my desk, all that jazz. Yes, yeah, that's definitely true, Spawnbroker. Development definitely is longer, takes longer, and is more expensive than most people would expect. Yeah, I agree, Goulash. People, people who play paper magic at local game stores, most of them aren't going to be able to get what they get from playing paper magic at a local game store out of arena. Are, are you dead yet? Nope, not yet. Still just, still just trucking along over there. Marching along, singing this song. The moon looks intriguing tonight. I didn't play my Cinder Vines pre-combat because it doesn't matter. Because the end result was going to be the same regardless. They just play them in response, so it doesn't matter. Year's Revenge. Thanks for taking advantage of that September discount. And subscribing for half off. Welcome back. Or welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. So I think you're right that it's like technically strictly optimal to play at pre-combat, but from a functional functional standpoint, it just doesn't matter. All right, so what do we name with our Tamio here? What do we what do we name with our Tamio here? My I feel like my dinos are just like sw swimming against an endless current. They're just like, please, please, please make it to the end of the river. Please. Are you, are you dead yet? How about, how about this turn? Are you, are you dead now? How, how about this turn? Are you, are you dead now? I think I'm happy with how I sideboarded. I probably want Veil of Summer actually to interact with their aether gusts and stuff yeah let's do it so veil stops aether gusts from taking my stuff that's in play it does not protect my stuff on the stack though is notable against uh, aether gust at least Spent a whole month with a gifted sub that I didn't know about, but incentivized me to sub to the person I watched the most magic content from. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for taking advantage of that uh, September half off, Jason. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I, I, I don't think I can mulligan this. Like, it doesn't have a Cinder Vines, but, like, there's only three Cinder Vines in my deck. So I feel like mulliganing hands to find Cinder Vines is unreasonable. I'm just going to hit my land drops, I think. I've got enough threats in my hand. I don't think I'm really interested in making changes to my deck on the sole basis of being better against Nexus of Fate. Nexus... I, one, I'm not sure if the Nexus of Fate matchup is even that bad. And two, even if it was, I'm not sure this archetype's popular enough to warrant warrant really like doing special things for. I think it's right to get this into play and smash them. As opposed to playing the Cinder Vines this turn. Yeah, people have asked me, like, what cards am I most excited to see leave? I think this is on the list of cards. I'm just like, I've had enough of this one in standard. Let's just, like, send it off into the eternal sunset of historic and modern.
Sure. Am I killing Wilderness Reclamation or Search for Ascanta? There's only two cards in their bin. I think I'm killing Wilderness Reclamation at this point. Is the store going to be arena only or is it accepted as a paper format too? So your local game store is allowed to sanction any format that they want to sanction. So I'm sure if a, a group of people show up and say, hey, local game store, we want to give you money to play this magic format, they're going to let take your money and let you play the format. Now, will Wizard of the Coast have like historic Grand Prix and stuff of that nature? We don't know that information yet. I think I'm just going to kill the Wilderness Reclamation here. I think we'll see companies like SCG and Nerd Rage do tournaments for whatever people want to show up and play. That's, that's why. Are they dead? Are they dead? Five... Nine, they're, they're dead. <sighs> dead you. Yeah, Marauding, Marauding Raptor. Coffees, coffees for closers. And Marauding Raptor's getting himself a cup of joe. Instead of just spreading FUD, which stands for Fear, Uncertainty, and Doubt, Eambot, can you form a logical, coherent thought about why you are fear-mongering that added cards could kill Paper Historic? Did you articulate your position for us? Modern exists, so what's the point is in no way, shape, or form related to adding cards to historic. The point, the point is, for people that don't that don't get it, is that as someone who plays a lot of modern and interacts with a lot of people who play a lot of modern, there are a lot of people that wish they had a non-rotating format to play that wasn't as expensive as Legacy with five hundred dollar dual lands or four hundred dollar dual lands or whatever they cost. Um, that want a slightly slower and more fair format. And if Historic can provide that, I expect it to be popular. It's a pretty good, pretty good six. Non-rotating formats are always expensive, Imbot. They they are. They, they that's just how it, how it works. If hundred if hundred dollar scalding tarns doesn't prevent people from playing lots of paper modern, I wouldn't expect things of similar things of that that though that pricing structure to impact people from playing other formats. They are they are not what those are not the cards they are going to add. The number. It really, the, the culture around outrage culture in general tends to suck in, in this year of our Lord 2019, but 
the outrage culture surrounding people who get outraged after only reading headlines and not actually reading all the information is so wild to me. Like, there's so many genuine things that are terrible to get pissed off about. Can you at least, like, have informed takes on things to get pissed off about? I don't know that I ever beat this card without this one. And I don't know, I don't even know that we beat this card even if they can't gain life at this point, right? Yeah, this matchup seems pretty impossible. They have Wild Growth Walker. As far as I can tell, the only way added cards will kill Historic is if the new cards will be brand new, specifically designed with Hearthstone-like digital mechanics. And they already said in... They already said in... On, on one of their streams, Eternal Witness, that they currently have no plans to create genuinely new cards to add to Historic, just for point point of reference. Um, I think our main deck's actually set up pretty well here. The sideboard in this list is pretty specific. It's like anti-enchantment, a little bit of grind, anti-control stuff, anti-graveyard stuff. So I think I'm just going to run it back and hope I have a Lava Coil for the Wild Growth Walker. I think is ideal here. Yeah, this is okay. Not amazing, but fine. Renin 6 is 130 tickets. Yikes. Yikes. So, I think, so J. Ray says, the only concern I have is new cards is how impactful they may be. Not powerful as in, well, I'm in this color, so I have to play four of these. And this is something that I've thought is really weird about Legacy and Modern for a long time. I don't understand why people take issue with new powerful cards that you suddenly have to play when there are so many cards already in these formats that are already like that. Why do the busted cards that are already there get this random free pass because they've been there for 10 years? I think that's a crappy stance to take. Either, either this is okay or it isn't. Having it just not be okay for newly printed cards is silly. I agree, Raptors. The historic announcements are awesome. All everything, everything they detailed in there, it's honestly better than what I would have put together. I would have just said back print sets. I think them printing specific cards is a great solution. It's a little bit awkward drawing this after we have Raptor in play because this dust dies. Yeah, I, I agree that it is an emotional attachment, Jason. I think that's an accurate summary. And I think that, like, having that emotional attachment is silly. I think that... Let me, let me rephrase. Having the emotional attachment is natural, but making decisions based on an emotional attachment instead of an objective data standpoint is silly. What are the cards I most hope get printed in Historic? My Historic list is... Uh, it's actually mostly Eldritch Mood cards. I'd really like Tireless Tracker... And um, Octodad, whatever whatever the eight mana Emerge guy is. I would like Bant Tamio. I would like Spell Queller with the asterisk that I don't want Spell Queller and Tefri there together. So please ban Tefri. I want Knuckle Blade. I hope the cycle of all the three color cards from Khans, Knuckle Blade, Siege Rhino, Mantis Rider, that, that whole set I think would be sweet to have. Wayworn Cypress, thanks for the thanks for the nine months. I appreciate that. 
Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Welcome to everybody today. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're out in the world. If you're a new viewer, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream Magic and other strategy games full-time here on Twitch. I'm here 30, 40, sometimes even 50 hours a week. It is currently September, so if you're someone out there who enjoys my content, who's been thinking about subscribing before, all subscriptions between now and September 24th are half off. So take advantage of that if you are interested in supporting my content. Shout out to all my existing subs already that keep me around. I'd also like to plug a couple of my wonderful sponsors here really quick. The Vitamin String Quartet creates unique instrumental string arrangements of everything from Zelda to Zeppelin. They would love to underscore your next gaming session. You can find them streaming now on services such as Spotify and Apple Music. InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience using code JEFF12. You can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose from the wide range of artwork they already have on their website, such as my own Hooglandia branded merchandise. And then, of course, CoolStuffInk.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code JEFF5, you can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and all sorts of other trading cards there with them. We are heading down on into our next match here with this red-green Dinos deck. going to play... One or two more with this, probably, before we wrap things up today. So, Creepy. I don't agree with the 2 to 1 ratio. New players are going to struggle too much to get into Historic. They don't want new players to get into Historic. That's that's the point. All the people that are like, this is bad because it's going to prevent new people from getting into it. That's the point. Historic is supposed to be there for existing players or people who know what they're getting into. People are like, they can't do this. It'll it'll prevent people from getting involved. Yeah, that's the reason they're doing it. They know what they're doing. Hey, Trog, thank you for taking advantage of that September discount. Thank you for the brand new tier one sub. Welcome to Hooglandia. Got a $10 tip there as well. I was watching your YouTube video with Elves, and I saw the defeat in your eyes, so I decided I would donate for the deck I used to get Mythic this season. Thank you. Thank you for the tip. I appreciate that. Happy to get that one added to the queue later tonight. Stooping ground. All right. So, uh, mono red. This match is probably okay for us. Let's go digging here. Uh, Ferocidon's kind of a scary one for us to play out in this matchup because our health totals a precious resource. Long time lurker. Getting one in on September. Love the content. Thanks for the good stuff. Well, thanks for keeping me around. I appreciate it. It's another light up the stage, yep. I think I just play this and hope it can block this turn. is. This is the first card we're going to cut during sideboarding here. So, they're not back adding sets to Historic 10. If you haven't read the announcement, I'd encourage you to do that. The announcement has said specifically that they intend to add specific cards from anywhere in Magic's history. They're not limiting themselves. Yeah, yeah, Prime subs uh, can get sub streaks just like any other sub. On on my end, sub, Prime subs are identical to Tier 1 subs in every way. Papi! Who do I have winning the Super Bowl this year? Super Bowl is football, right? I think I think that's the case, but I want to confirm. I have, I have no idea in case that, in case you didn't get that bit from there. Star Streak Entertainment, thank you for the two months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. The Superb Owl is the most glorious animal. <laughs> that's a that's a good one. I'm gonna have to remember that one. The Superb Owl. Well, if they don't kill anything on our board, we get to play a big dumb dino next turn. 
If they do kill something on our board, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Hey, Ryum, is it too early to put this towards Esper Fairies? We know we're gonna try. It's not. You're right, there's definitely gonna be Esper Fairies played. <laughs> Thanks for the support. Yikes. Yikes! We did play Esper Fairies yesterday, dude. Light. It was a treat. I did play Brawl and you did miss it. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube as always. If that's a good note for anybody who doesn't check my YouTube channel regularly, if you want to see me play Brawl, we played it for over an hour yesterday and got all the wins. So it's on. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, Galta. Droth, welcome, welcome. Thank you for the brand new tier one sub. Thanks for keeping me employed here this month with that. Arthanus, welcome back. Thanks for shipping your Bezo Bucks this way again. I believe we have died, chat. Bib Racamontes, welcome to Hoaglandia. Thanks for the brand new sub. Oh gosh, man, this sideboard is really bad, huh? Do, do I have to leave my rampaging for Astonauts in here? I have, I have actual like zero cards in my sideboard that are good here, right? I guess, I guess we board in Cinder Vines. I guess. Like Frenzy, Frenzy's kind of unbeatable. Yeah, this is supposed to be a good matchup, I believe. So here's the thing though, Creepy, and this is another thing that I don't understand. Why do you need every legal historic card to play historic? Why can't you just have one or two decks? Speaking as someone like, who played the same deck in Modern for basically forever. Like, I don't understand the idea that like, if you're, if, if you are currently playing Standard, if you have a competitive Standard deck right now, there is a super high probability that you already have a competitive Historic deck for zero additional wild cards. Concede? Why do I want to concede? I think this matchup's actually okay for us. Veil vale doesn't do anything against Mono Red. Zerglash, thank you for the thirty-two months of pri thirty-two months of Prime. I appreciate that. Welcome back. St. Leopold, welcome, welcome. Howdy, howdy. Bunch of subs this afternoon. Y'all are great. Happy Friday. Welcome to the weekend. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Charles Kyle. Eternal formats, they're just not good for people that want to play everything. We, to be fair, we had someone, we were playing Veil and Modern this morning too, and people there were suggesting it just gives Hexproof too. Easiest block of my life. Rat, they have a second land. The one, the one rampaging frosted on me left in, go.
Think that if I'm spending three or four hundred dollars on a video game across one year, I shouldn't feel this limited with my options, especially when I can add in the free earnings. I'm gonna challenge your statement there, Roger Ghoul. If you as someone who has actual everything, not not even actually, but mostly everything, if you're actually spending four hundred dollars a year on Magic Arena and getting zero free to play stuff, you have very close to at least half of every set then if you factor in you're actually playing any amount like you probably have over half of every set and if you continue to do that you'll have half of every set between now till forever this for vampire have a sword to go with your 12 month shield there And yeah, and that's true too. Let's face it, half there's it probably mean it I agree, it probably means most of the playable cards in those sets. I keep forgetting to re-up this here, some prime box. Well, thanks for when you do, Hammy. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Half of the set is weighted more towards no. I'm talking about half of the half of the like rares and stuff too. Like at at 200 booster packs, I start getting 20 gems instead of rares inside of boosters. So you have you have a you have everything but mythics. Uh, you have everything but a complete set of mythics at 200 packs. This is, this is the card we really want to draw in this matchup. It's so good. Just like tough to attack through. Draws us cards when they do eventually kill it. Four, five, four fives are cheating. I agree. They're, they're busted. Yeah, arena, arena being completely divorced from MTG Finance nonsense is also very nice. Yeah, yeah, I agree on that. That's something we talked about too. That people were, a lot of the people in chat earlier were saying they're just like, they don't play a ton and they're, they're mostly free to play and they tend to have 50 to 60K per set gold, which is like a quarter of the set just for playing the previous set. I am having a fantastic Friday night. Thanks for keeping me around. Gonna run it back here. Let's uh, let's just draw Rip Jaw Raptor again. That card's busted. One of your one of your finest Rip Jaws, please. So one of the things this is probably my biggest hope for Historic. My biggest hope for Historic is that if it's primarily played digitally, Wizards of the Coast will be more aggressive with managing the format if they release something that has a big impact because refunding people wild cards for when you ban something is not that big of a deal so they can take more risks because the the blowback when you make an oops is softened when you're able to give something people something back that's meaningful right That, that, again, is, like, something I've always wanted for Modern, though. So there's a chance they don't do that. But that's something I've always wished they would do. Because as I've talked about before, as is true with most things in life, if you're not failing occasionally, you're not innovating enough. So I would rather the Magic Design Team take risks and occasionally miss rather than be super conservative with all of their design ideas. 
I think I mulligan this, right? Just like no meaningful plays that impact the board till turn three on the draw. I have two lands that hurt me. I think if I had like basic forest here, I'd keep this so I could potentially commune into a two drop. But I think how slow the hand is and with how much damage I potentially take from the land means I want to play catch and release here. And I actually think this hand's a lot better. Like a two, three on two is great. <laughs> oh. Double raptor is awkward for your other creatures. Not really. I expect these raptors to die. So I would, I would be very surprised if both these raptors live. And if both these raptors live, I'm kind of okay with that. I'm playing this out even though they have Lava Coil exiled over here because they're only going to have three mana this turn. So this makes them choose between Lava Coiling my thing and playing their 2-1 out. And because I have a backup Raptor, I'm okay with this exchange. I'm going to lead on this Ferocidon over the Marauding Raptor here because not only is this the more resource efficient play, but I'd rather this die than this die because this one hurts me. You know what? If we had to go through Hogok Summer to get Faithless Looting finally banned, good. God, God bless. 10 out of 10 out of 10 would do it again. Hey, the elk. Thanks for keeping me around. I appreciate that. Welcome. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at. All right. I think I'm just going to try and race them here. Let's just ignore the Chandra. Yeah, Hagak, Hagak was quietly a hero all along. This is a little scary because this Registrar puts us to nine because of this, but I feel like I have like one mode here. Uh, there was a blue-red Phoenix deck that posted a 5-0 finish without Faithless Looting in the last decklist dump. For people, for people that are missing that archetype. That's really unfortunate. I needed that to live. I think we're going to be a little short here. <sighs> Woof. Yep. Yeah, that's just dead. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm just dead there. Because I have to hit Chandra, but if I attack with one, they first strike it. If I attack with both, I take six and die. Man, playing playing Dinosaurs and Esper today reminded me why I don't spend a lot of time playing meta decks, because both of these decks have been, like, aggressively middling. Esper, Esper felt out and out bad with all the Field of the Dead we played against, and this one's just been okay. Oh, the Frostodon has Menace. Sure. And I guess I'm not dead on board. You're right. You're right. I wasn't the Frost. I forgot about Menace. So we, we technically weren't dead on board. Likely, likely still dead because we were going to two.
Yeah, sure, piano, but I think I think it's disingenuous to compare a, to a degree like saying this is better than paper, so it's fine. Like, paper magic's an incredibly expensive hobby. Yeah, yeah, if my goal was just laddering, I would probably play Yorick Field. That being said, the the ladder system on Arena le left me pretty frustrated last season, so I'm not really putting a lot of effort into it this season. If if we happen to oops in the top 1,000, we happen to oops in the top 1,000, but I'm not really sweating it. Having, having like, stressing out over over a ladder rank and then like having to do well in another tournament and then having to do well in another tournament is like getting, getting crushed on tiebreakers. The last one was pretty like, it's like, all right, we did it. We got close. We'll, we'll maybe think about it later. Hey, the man, the myth, the legend, the day nine TV. Hope your start of your weekend is treating you well, Sean. Yeah, yeah, I played the qual I mean I played the qualifier last time. I bet this matchup's really bad for us. If they're playing feather, we don't have that much meaningful interaction and we don't race that quickly. <sighs> Think I'm gonna just leave Rip Drop back on defense here. It's just a lot of emotional investment for probabilistically basic for probabilistically nothing, Chef Seth. Yeah, I, I agree I agree, Bibbs. At the at the end of last season, I was feeling very frustrated and sad with both magic and my job as magic, so taking taking a step back and not uh not focusing on that was definitely the right decision. I don't think we want to be defensive in this matchup, but what's my option here, chat? Like, you, you have to play with the cards you're dealt. So you're right. In an ideal world, we need to kill them, but I don't really have the tools to do that. We've played Twiddlestorm twice, and it's been kind of medium, both times we've played it. You know, I don't think we can beat this God's Willing here, right? I guess I guess I have double Regisaur. Maybe maybe double Reggie can pull us through. Nah, I don't think Cinder Vines is quite good enough. Now Fry is pretty good. We do have four copies of that. Yeah, if we hit a Galta, that could be okay. They scried top. Hopefully they attack with Feather. That would be really good for us. Rats. Huh? Beep, beep. So I think with the Marauding Raptor draw here... I'm just going to smash with the squad this turn. Hey, welcome back, Korluski. Good to have you. Uh, getcha. Arrgh. 
So like, this can eat this or this along with the gods willing. I think it's pretty minimalistic either way, whether or not you're playing Coil or Savage Stomp or Domri's Ambush. I think they're all pretty similar cards that are all better in some situations and worse than others. Yeah, we're, not, we're not blocking. It's not our job to figure it out. Mm, these blocks are pretty good. So they get to do this and then they take eight, nine, 10 down to eight. Hopefully the second Registrar will be able enough to get us through here. Are they rethinking? These aren't particularly useful overall. Oh, they might be thinking about, do they want to trade for the 3-1 here? They might like bounce off the 1-2 and trade for the 3-1. Interesting. The fact that they chose to leave us all of these feels pretty good knowing we have this the register in our hand. Now, hopefully, they just grind a card to the top, so hopefully it's not Reckless Rage. If this is Reckless Rage, we're probably just... We're, no, we are just dead. I'm going to concede if it's a Reckless Rage. When can we expect another cameo appearance? Ah, uh, Probably not during the week. He's uh, My youngest one is in daycare full-time, and my older one is in kindergarten now. So they are out and about while I'm here. I mean, they scried top a bunch when they could have dug deeper, so. What did they keep? Dino Smash? If they had Reckless Rage, they could have Reckless Raged us twice. Settle the record. Don't you put that on me. Don't you put that dark magic on me. Just a second, guys. So they're dead, right? They block the three biggest ones and take seven. Okay, sweet. I feel like with how many scry ones they had, they should have dug a bit deeper. I feel like they had a lot of scry ones to keep uh, another God's Willing on top. Worked out, worked out for us though. All right, so this is definitely a matchup where we're gonna board in a bunch of copies of Fry post board. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if they would have been more aggressive with their scries, we probably would have lost that. I think I'm just going to trade the Rampaging Frostodon because it does hurt us on occasion for fries just to be a little bit more interactive on the draw here. The rest of this seems okay. I know Vivian can shoot down Feather, but I feel like she's too slow overall. I also don't really want to dilute more than just having 10 removal spells. Like, even, even 10 might be pushing it a little bit. I did not catch Huey playing the Arcfield deck, unfortunately. I haven't, I haven't had a ton of time to watch magic content myself lately. Jake, the kids, the kid, Jake, Cr Christy signed Jake up for a couple of different extracurricular activities. So the time outside of content stuff for magic for me has been low lately. I've also been focusing my extra effort into modern since that just had bans and unbans. And there's a tournament, a modern tournament I'm playing tomorrow. Yeah, I think that's pretty likely to be true, APR. By the time by the time Vivian comes down, the game's likely decided in one direction or the other already. What time is the tournament tomorrow? I think 9 a.m. Central. I don't know offhand, I need to check. It's 9, it's 9 or 10, 9 or 10 uh, cornfield time. What am I bringing? I don't know. It's a it's a moto tournament, so I don't have to I don't have to figure it out till tonight because I can get cards from MTGO traders whenever. Nine 
No, I don't think I'm playing the tempo deck. More. The more I played that deck, the sadder it made me. I might just pick something new and play it cold. Hey, Gutramus Prime, thanks for the quarter of your. I think I covered your question there already. Thanks for the thanks for the support. If the Grand Prix doesn't have coverage tomorrow, I plan to stream my modern tournament on a delay. If the Grand Prix does have coverage tomorrow, I'll probably just watch the Grand Prix while I play. Sorry, it's a it's a it's a moto tournament. Whatever, whatever I play is gonna have some kind of combo kill in it. That I've decided that I might play something cold that I haven't played before, but it's definitely gonna involve a combo kill. No, playing green black elves into a field full of Renin sixes and plague engineers is an awful idea. I was almost I was almost gonna try elves this morning, and then I was reminded Renin six got printed. I was just off it immediately. Zero percent chance I play Storm. I think that deck is not very good and it's tedious. It's both it's both not very good and it's if I find I find it pretty uninteresting. Honestly, part of me wants to be really dry and just play, just play Titan, Titan Shift tomorrow. Just because it'll be. Playing, playing Titan Shift would be very straightforward and easy. Dredge is actually probably a good choice. I've played a bunch of Dredge, historically speaking. I should add that to my list to consider. I actually, I actually like playing Dredge. I don't like playing against sideboard hate cards, but there's less of those now. Yeah, Dredge, Dredge with Tomb Scour is like not bad. Speaking of not bad, our hand here is pretty reasonable. And like if they tap out for Feather here, we just like go tap land fry, hit you for two. If they don't tap out for a threat, we get to play Shifting Ceratops. Have a, have a two one. Are they two for winning my Raptor? Deal. Tradesies, Tradesies. Hey, look, it's Feather without a white mana to protect it. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Bluetron, Bluetron is super underwhelming. I'm going to play this because next turn I can go Ceratops with Haze smash you for nine. Sounds great. You did miss Esper Control. It was a very sad set. That's unfortunate. Thanks for the 10 months, Jame. We have another Reckless Rage. I don't know that we can beat another Reckless Rage. We have to draw. Yeah, it's just, this is, it's just so demoral. Being in positions like this are just so demoralizing. You're just like, well, can't play a creature because it'll just die. Need to draw Lava Coil or Rip Draw Raptor here. I'll play these out. If they want to reckless rage through these, I think that's fine. Sure. Having the shock is is less less exciting, but that's what it is. Is 
So the Arcanist will attack, it'll shock the thing. Alright, so you have to draw an answer right now. Uh, you're missing the fact that there's two Reckless Rages in their bin. One, four, five, please. Well. Until they have a third... Until they have a third copy of Reckless Rage, this is okay. Yeah, Scape Shift, the Scape Shift archetype is really good against a lot of the decks that people like to play in Modern. <sighs> well, I get to block and kill Dreadhorde Arcanist, but the way Feather interacts with this is they get the Reckless Rage back to their hand. Right. I mean, all things considered, that's the best draw in my deck, I think. Yeah, I mean, Feather, Feather really excels against decks like ours, right? Like, decks that aren't particularly aggressive... But also, um, but also aren't particularly interactive. Oh, right. We stole game one. That's exciting. That's exciting. I forgot. I forgot there was a third game, chat. I, for I forgot there was a third game. I was, I was sad. I was sad. We get a, a do-over. One, one mulligan, please. No, we stole, we stole game one, remember? They flooded out a little bit and didn't have any cards to go with their thing. I think we have an option of not blocking and playing gold the next turn with the land. Nah, I think I'd rather block and draw two cards. Because if I block and draw two cards there, if they don't have God's Willing, what happens is I block, I draw two cards, I take their Cranko off the table, and I'm pretty likely to draw a removal spell to kill their Feather as well. Yeah, that was a good mulligan. Uh, it's too greedy to bottom a land, right? It's too greedy to bottom a land. Someone tell me it's too greedy to bottom a land. I'm supposed to bottom a fry, right? I'm supposed to bottom a fry. It's kind. It's kind of greedy. Like, Raptor into Raptor on the play is like... We're not quitters, bottom of the boat. <laughs> I just want the record to reflect that I was peer pressured into this. I would like... I would like to go on record that I was peer pressured into this decision. 
and that Chad is intentionally trying to destroy my rank. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh! Oh, come on! This is a part where they like lava coil us and we never draw land. Don't do it, have a heart. Don't do it. Don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. We won't stop until Jeff is brought for again. <laughs> Nothing but net. Nothing but net. Papi! Don't you want a want a fanta? Dun 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 da. Bum 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 bum. One two. All right. One two. Buckle my shoe. Three four. Draw the fourth land and run them out the door. Straight justice here. Yep. Yep. Cr incredibly sp skill based game. Incredibly skill-based game. Terrible decisions. GG. Oh no, not a legionnaire. You yelling poppy is my favorite part of this stream. Listen, I aim to please, okay? Huh? I feel like they're holding up God's willing here. So do I register, register and head to the, head to the, I think, I think I'm supposed to double removal because this thing is going to get out of, this thing is going to get out of removal range here soon. I don't think I want to fry in response to this. I could fry in response to this to deny them the card draw, but I think that's overly aggressive. I would like to dedicate this game to Twitch chat. I only believe some of the terrible things people have said about you. Rawr. Big dumb dinos. Bum ba dum bum 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 bum. Attack for thirteen. Hmm. The gods will it, do they? If they want to eat my three one, go for it. We'd be flooding without our smart decision. That's that's just that's just the God's honest truth right there. Without the powerful decision making of Twitch chat, we'd be flooded. All aboard the train, chat. This dino pain train has no brakes. Toot toot. <laughs> we didn't need the fry chat, but it felt good in my heart of hearts to know, to know that the fries were there available to me. How does trample and protection from a color work? That's a good question. So trample and protection from a color works in a completely unintuitive manner. When you trample over a creature that has protection from your color, you have to assign damage equal to that creature's toughness and then the rest tramples over. So you have to assign what would be lethal even though it's not gonna take damage. It's one of the many reasons protection is awkward and weird. All right, 
Anywho, uh, that's gonna be it for me for today, folks. I really appreciate everyone hanging out. I think there's a good probability that I'm gonna be streaming the Modern Tournament tomorrow. Um, if you're a sub, I'll post in the Discord as always if I end up going live. I'll probably tweet as well. Make sure you're following the Twitch channel here as always for notifications on everything. Uh, thanks everyone to all the, the subs and resubs today. We had a bunch of people that subbed for the first time with the, with the September promotion going on. Remember, if you're interested in more content from myself, be sure to check out my website and my YouTube channel. Oh, to wrap on this really quick, I think I'd reconsider the sideboard. I feel like four fries and three Veil of Summer is probably a little bit overkill. I felt like I didn't have enough cards for like the mono red matchup. I'd probably get some number of Thrashing Bronson on in here, I think. Like, at the very least, like, Trim of Vines, Trim of Veil, get some Brontodons in here to make the, the Mono Red matchup a little bit better. I'd probably want to keep these Sentinel Totems until I'd played against Keithus a little bit, because I bet I bet the Keithus matchup is hard. So Totem and Fry should help there. Uh, at any rate, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to go ahead and give someone who's streaming some Standard now a host, and uh, I'll be back with more Standard on uh, Monday. I start Standard about 10 a.m. every single day if you're someone who's uh, new, and that's Central Cornfield time, as always. Who's, who's streaming some standard?